The wife of God versus the bride of Christ. Uh, and we're explaining the difference between the wife of God and the, and the bride of Christ. Many people make the wife of Jehovah, which is Israel, and the bride of Christ, which is the church, one and the same thing. When one does this, they are faced with many contradictions because of the different descriptions given. Uh, when we see these uh, are two separate entities, Israel as a wife of Jehovah and the church as a bride of Christ, there are no contradictions. So let's look first at the wife of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 1 through 3, we see that God entered into a covenant with his people at Mount Sinai. And, and note that this is with Israel and not with the Gentiles. And later in our study, we will see that this covenant relationship was viewed as a marriage contract. And in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 through 15, we see that God tells us of his jealousy over his wife, Israel. And Israel is also warned not to commit adultery uh, through the worship of other gods, or he will eventually cause Israel's expulsion from the land. Ezekiel was one of the Jewish prophets that saw this covenant relationship as a marriage contract. And that is in uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 8. Uh, several of their Old Testament prophets spoke about uh, Israel's adultery. In Jeremiah uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, uh, we see that Israel was guilty of uh, playing the harlot of, uh, with many lovers. And then in uh, Jeremiah uh, 3, uh, verse 20, he compares uh, Israel to a wife who has turned away from her husband. Israel was guilty of adultery and had departed from her husband. And then Jeremiah tells us in uh, uh, chapter 31, verse 32, that the original marriage contract was broken because of that adultery. So then Ezekiel also tells us of the great adultery in Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 15 through 34. Hosea uh, tells us of the charge of God, uh, of the charge that God had against Israel. And Israel was guilty of harlotry in uh, Hosea uh, chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. As a result of this adultery, a separation took place between God and Israel in the days of Isaiah. In Isaiah 50, verse 1, uh, God told the prophet that God had not yet divorced his wife. If he had, he would have uh, given them a bill of divorcement. There was no bill of divorcement, so the separation lasted about a uh, hundred years. The reason for their rejection was their sins. They had brought all these problems upon themselves, and the, and the separation of a hundred years uh, did not produce repentance in Israel. So finally, God had no choice but to issue a bill of divorcement because of their adultery. Uh, to a large extent, all of Jeremiah can be said to be God's bill of divorcement of Israel, uh, but especially Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 6 through 10. Many of the Old Testament prophecies tell us of uh, Israel's punishment for her unfaithfulness. For example, Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 35 through 43, and Hosea uh, 2, uh, verses uh, 6 through 13. Uh, God's aim was not to be vengeful towards Israel, uh, but to cause her to stop sinning and to stop her adulteries. Uh, and you find that in Ezekiel 16, uh, verse 34. And that punishment was to show Israel her needs for her true husband and not for the false lovers. Hosea chapter 2, verse 7. And throughout God's punishment, there, has, uh, uh, there was a continual call to repentance. And Jeremiah presented this call in uh, Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 11 through 18. So these uh, Jewish prophets spoke of a future day when Israel would become the restored wife of Jehovah. Uh, restoration re would require a new uh, uh, covenant and a, a new marriage contract, rather. Uh, uh, according to Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. And that's often uh, uh, this known as a new covenant and a contract that God will make with the two houses of Israel and Judah. It is necessary because the old covenant was broken. And Ezekiel tells us that God will enter into an everlasting covenant with Israel in the future. 
And the remarriage contract is also described by him in Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 60 through 63. Isaiah 54, verses 1 through 8, tells us of the restoration of uh, Israel as Jehovah's wife. Then Isaiah further describes this in Isaiah uh, chapter 62, verses 4 through 5. Hosea tells us about the adulteries of Israel and, and spoke of Israel's reunion with her husband and describes the courtship in the wilderness and, and, and also shows the four results of the reunion. And you find that in Hosea chapter 2, verses 14 through 23. So now what about the bride of Christ? So far, uh, we have seen Israel's relationship with God. The bride of Christ is a universal body of true believers and composed of all believers, regardless of their geographical location and denominational affiliation. The church today is shown as a bride that is engaged and not yet joined by marriage to her husband, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The New Testament tells us this bride was hid in God and does not say hid in scriptures. Therefore, it is impossible for this mystery of the church of God to be spoken of or revealed in the Old Testament. So the church is uh, presented as a pure virgin in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 11, uh, verse 2. Uh, says, for I am a for I am jealous over you with a godly jealous. See, for I espouse you to one husband that I might present you a pure virgin to Christ. And uh, uh, speaking to the local church found in the city of Corinth, Paul declares that by means of evangelism, they were espoused to one husband for the purpose of eventually being presented as a pure virgin to Christ. Unlike Israel, who was guilty of adultery, when the union becomes uh, or comes between the Messiah and the church, the church will be presented as a pure virgin. Uh, Satan counterfeits God in his uh, work also. And you'll find that in Isaiah 14, uh, verse 14. And the mark of a counterfeit mystery is the claim of apostolic signs or succession. Uh, check out uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. And uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 9. Revelation 13, uh, uh, 13 through 15. Two of the greatest counterfeit movements are the Catholic Church and the Charismatic Church. A diligent student discerns between the holy and the profane. And uh, take a look at uh, Leviticus 10, uh, verse 10, 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 6, and Revelation uh, chapter 2, verse 2. Uh, so now we'll look at the uh, sanctification of the bride uh, in Ephesians 5, uh, 25 through 27. One of the purposes of the Messiah is that he might sanctify the church. This is necessary so that he can present the church as a pure virgin, as mentioned in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 2. The church is uh, sanctified by continual washing of water with the word so that he can present the church to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or, or, or any such thing. So the church could be holy and without blemish. The washing of water mentioned here is not water baptism. It is a cleansing ministry. Uh, the purpose of this is so the church can be presented as a glorious virgin to the Messiah. We also see the mention of the marriage in Revelation 19, uh, verses 6 through 9. The Jewish wedding system was common in the day of Jesus. And first, the father of the groom has to make the arrangement for the bride and pays the bride price. And this price was the blood of Christ. In Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verses 25 through 27. After this, we see the fetching of the bride. This we will see at the rapture of the church when Jesus comes for the church. This can be seen in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. And then we have the marriage ceremony in which only the saved are invited. And this takes place in heaven just prior to the second coming of Christ at the end of the tribulation. 
those that will be present are only those who are in heaven at that time. And that's Revelations 19, uh, verses 6 through 8. And then we have the marriage feast as described in Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. We know that uh, many are invited to come to the marriage feast, but this will be a different place from the marriage ceremony. Uh, in Daniel uh, chapter 12, verse 2, we can see that the Old Testament saints are not resurrected with the church before the tribulation, but resurrected at the end of the tribulation. Notice that uh, John the Baptist, the last one of the uh, Old Testament prophets, was a friend of the bridegroom, but did not consider himself to be a member of the bride of Christ. Uh, you see that in John chapter 3, verses 17 through 30. And this tells us that many that are bidden to the marriage supper on earth are Old Testament saints and tribulation saints that were resurrected after the second coming of Christ. Uh, the marriage of the Lamb will take place in heaven prior to the second coming of Christ. The marriage feast will take place on earth after the second coming. Now, the bride is the wife of Christ. And in Revelations 21, verse 9, John tells us that one of the seven angels will show him the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And then in uh, Revelation 21, we see a description of the eternal wife of the Lamb in her eternal uh, abode. And I uh, thank you 